Yeah, um, I have I have two messages. I have uh, one which is more personal and a message on how to design materials uh, for the future. That's what I call it after 30 years in wood science and maybe where I am right now after the 30 years. So, um, you know, look at my achievements list. This is amazing. I have a, a super high age factor. I published a lot of papers. And and the first line, <clears throat> I worked in all these areas. Actually, I worked in everything. Wood biology, the wood plastic materials, polymers. I had five professorship appointments. I'm in the third professorship right now. So it looks all great, doesn't it? Um, I don't want to impress you too much by the next slide. I want to question myself a little bit <clears throat> uh, for your reflection. Uh, I changed my subject on work, maybe not always by choice, but when I look back, I would say, um, maybe I changed too much and it was my fault too. So if you decide, you know, you see a new topic uh, coming up somewhere, maybe think about when you want to change. So stick with one or two subjects. That's a, that's a think, uh, looking back recommendation. I always wanted to change the place where I'm working. So I did this a couple of times. I think it's good to move, but maybe just move once. Of course, you never know what's coming up. You know, there's a family and there's this and there and so forth. But that's just a kind of a conclusion. Uh, so I was lacking continuity. And when you get older, you cannot get very experienced in all the subjects any longer. It's just not the time available. Um, there's always something that slows you down, somebody that doesn't like what you're doing. So the question is how you respond to that. That's actually, I would have enjoyed getting more advice how to better handle that. But um, I might have just done my experience and others have others, but a good advisor, a good mentor is something really to appreciate. So like for me, I always was asking myself, should I go to, to the United States because I've worked for a couple of years? Maybe I should have done that. I, have, I haven't at the end. One of the reasons was that my country was, you know, Austria is just so beautiful and it's so hard to go. Everything is super organized. So if you live in a place where it's not nice, actually, I see it as an advantage because you are more easy to, to be mobile. Uh, I, I could give you uh, plenty of examples for that. And I was lucky to have had a friend, uh, a physicist, and he did a postdoc at that time, years ago. And he once came to me and said, you need a kick in the ass, otherwise you never will do any move. And I, I'm so thankful for that advice that he gave me at that time. But still, I said I would do it all over again, of course, because it's a fascinating um, job that I'm doing. And that's my personal reflection. And if, if you go to the next slide, uh, Uwe, you see um, one of the thinking with sustainable future. I'm personally not a fan of sustainability. I know all the history and everything, but it's in a sense, it's a kind of a guilt management, yeah? And I'm not getting deeper into it. I, example, I worked years in wood plastic composites and I know it was a wrong thing to do, but it took me a while to figure out because I was putting things together and I felt I'm making plastic more good, less, like less bad. And at the end, I have a product that we can't recycle, that we can't just burn. Of course, you can melt it down because you're using thermoplastics, but you need to collect the material first, which is impossible. So I want to expose a little bit to this less bad philosophy that we are following a lot for good reasons, of course. I'm not saying everything, there's not black and white. There's no black and white picture. So um, what is a good material? How to design it? Uh, gradle the grave, take, make waste. That's a concept we are following a lot. We take something, we make something and we waste it. To some extent, it goes back where we took it, but to a lower quality. If you, uh, if 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 I want to, you know, point this to, a, to the next slide, you see 
you have to eat oysters because one oyster has about 15,000 pieces of plastic. So if you are, eat oysters, you are cleaning the environment. So <laughs> you're, helping, you're helping the world to be getting less bad. Next picture is if you drink champagne, it has smaller CO2 bubbles. So you're minimizing your carbon footprint by drinking champagne instead of Prosecco, which has much bigger CO2 bubbles. There is an example, you know, I, I took off my hairs because I want just say water. And I'm and I, you know, there are investigations on it. 2,000 liters of water by one woman a year, or at least cut your hairs. So Yorgo, for example, is following my example. <clears throat> and I'm getting more serious. Um, you know, this, this piece here for eating noodles in two minutes, it has about 600 different chemicals into it to get all the performance you need. And it's, I, I investigated all these uh, uh, papers that have, you know, their recent paper, it's just amazing what's in there. To switch to the, uh, the wood area, you're all familiar with that. And uh, some of you have uh, mentioned um, formaldehyde in investigating new ways and so forth, the new glues and so forth. Actually, is that a good product or not? Actually, if you get something out that you don't want, it's not a good product. Maybe we can do it better right now, but the goal in design must be to have to have this problem just not present. An example with this wood plastic composite and on the left down corner, you see this re recycling sign, which is certain which is nonsense because there was not one meter recycled in the world, I'm claiming, you know, I know it for here, all the companies disappeared meanwhile, and it probably was just the wrong direction. So Gradle the Grave think is very much focusing on reducing, reducing, avoiding, minimizing, preventing. And so the footprint, the footprint should be as small as possible. And how to design material? And the next one is, Look at the cherry tree. The cherry tree has much too many flowers. All these flowers actually to reproduce the tree, much less would be sufficient, but the tree produces so much in abundance and it's it's all nutrients to the environment around it. And if you, so think about this one thought, uh, two properties, either it's a biological nutrient this is an example for a shirt that's 100% cotton, no mix with other textile. So you get one component of material and it's all 100% biodegradable. It's not just 80% or 50%, it's 100%. And is uh, some examples from the wood area. We have been working also on some of the materials. We try to do it not just 80% lignocellulosic, but 100%. So biological, think about a material can be 100% biological nutrient. There are a couple of slides on the showing this is pulp molding furniture. The second option, that might be new to you, it's technical nutrient. Think about the material could be a technical nutrient. What do I mean with that? Like a window could be plastic, aluminum, but the idea is you have put this together that you can separate it at the end and you have individual clean materials like PVC only, metal only, class only. So it's designed for this assembly. And if you like the next slide is a is an office chair, like uh, they, they exist on the market and you can separate the, uh, the components. They're all single material types that could be rejoined in the next generation of product using the same types of materials. So yeah, you, we, there's not just one cycle, like, you know, take, make, uh, and waste. There are two cycles. The one cycle is the biological cycle, and the one is the, is, is the technical cycle. I'm not rejecting plastics. I think plastic is a material that we need to use, and we need to use the oil, maybe less, but not take it out completely. But the plastic should be just one type of plastic, like PVC or yeah, a polypropylene, just one part, one type. If you mix them together, you lose all the value and you downcycle the material. If you can separate them and have the clean plastic type A and plastic type B, you can reuse it in the same level. It's called upcycling. So think about these two cycles. And there's no, at, at, the, at the bottom down end, there's no waste. Actually, this would be a waste-free Material. So when you think about new materials that you are designing in your research, think about is it the nutrient cycle or is it the technical cycle? Actually, and that's the top of it, wood 
serves both cycles. I, I'm convinced that wood is 100% bio, bio, this is all we know, but it also serves as a technique because you can recycle it. Like look at the old churches in Finland or old constructions where technically, so wood can actually serve kind of both cycles. That's something I wanted to, to share with you, uh, you know, how to, to, to design materials of the future by expanding the one cycle into two cycles. It's called cradle to cradle principle. There are some books around. If you want to know more, thanks for listening.